Hello everyone, um, welcome to week one of CH 109 and today we will be measuring the pH of some acids and bases and if you look at the manual the first part of the experiment is to calibrate the pH sensor and the pH probe and we have the pH probe right here and to do the calibration I'm just going to follow what you have in the manual by going to the experiment and going to calibrate and we are calibrating the pH probe here. We are using a two-point calibration system and I'm going to be using pH buffer 4 and pH buffer 7 for the calibration. And to do that, I click on calibrate now and I'm going to use a first buffer, in this case, which is buffer four. But before I do that, I have to rinse the probe. So I rinse the tip of the probe and I dab that with wipe and in calibrating the pH probe I'm looking at the voltage reading here to see when it is stable and it seems to be stable and then I enter the value of the pH unit which is pH 4 and I click keep and then I rinse the pH probe once again. And go ahead to dab with the king wipe. And then I can use the next pH um, buffer, which is seven, and do exactly the same thing. I will wait for the voltage to stabilize and as you can see it has stabilized and I'm entering the value of the buffer which is 7 in this case and then I click keep and I'm all done with the calibration of the probe and before I use my pH probe for the for measuring the pH of these solutions I'm going to ensure to clean once again and then dab with Kim White. Once that is done, we will move on to measuring the pH of the first set of solutions. And to do that, I'm going to be starting with 0.1 molar HCl and since I've already rinsed the probe and I can easily just measure the pH of the solution or wait for the reading to stabilize So we have a pH of 1.33 for 0 0.1 molar HCl. Once again, within each trials, I'm going to have to rinse the pH probe and dab with a clean Kim wipe. I can move on to the next one. In this case, this is 0 0.1 molar phosphoric acid and I go ahead to measure the pH using the probe and wait for a stable reading. This time around the reading is 1.67. I do exactly the same thing for all the other subsequent solutions. I'm moving on to 0 0.1 molar citric acid and that has a pH of 
2.01. And I move to the next one, but before that I rinse my pH probe and dab with the king wipe. This time around I'm doing 0.1 molar acetic acid and for that the pH is 2.54. I rinse once again. The next one is DI water and the pH. It's difficult to get the pH of this DI water in the case because you don't have the presence of ions in the solution. So, in we could take 5.64. I'll still go higher to rinse. It's best practice. And dab my pH pro. And the next one is 0.1 molar sodium bicarbonate and the pH for that is 8.84 go ahead and rinse my pH pro The next solution is 0.1 molar ammonia and um, the pH for that is 9.76. Once again, I rinse my pH probe and wipe it down. And the next solution is my 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and the pH of that is 12.38 now having done that part for the 0.1 molar concentrated solutions of the uh, various solutions. I move on to part C, which involves several concentrations of um, hydrochloric acid and um, sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to be starting with 0 0.01 molar HCl. Rinse the pH probe and wipe it down and measure the pH of that solution. In this case, the pH is 3.29. I rinse my probe once again and wipe it down with King White and move on to 0 0.01 molar HCl and the pH for that is 3.29. I rinse my probe and wipe it down once again. The next one is 0 0.1 molar HCl. And that has a pH of 
one point four six. I rinse my pH Pro and wipe it down. The next solution is one molar HCl. And the pH for that solution about 0 0.55 and I rinse my pH probe and wipe it down and then the final solution for the adichloric acid is the 5 molar HCl and that gives us a pH value of negative 0 0.3 negative 0 0.42 once again I rinse my probe and then wipe it down So because of the drift with the equipment, I have recalibrated the pH Pro using um, pH 7 and a buffer of pH 10. Although this is not ideal to do that in between your experiments, but because of limitations of the equipment, we have decided to do that so that we can get measurable readings for the alkali solutions. So I will go ahead now to take the pH of the 0 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide. So I rinse the probe once again and then wipe it down. And then I can take the reading. And in this case, the pH of that is Eleven point five six. So I rinse the probe once again and then wipe it down and then move on to the zero point zero one molar sodium hydroxide. And that gives us a pH of 12.33. Once again, I rinse the probe and wipe it down with Kim Wipe. And I'm moving to the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, which has a pH of 12.51. And I rinse the probe.
I move to the next one, which is one molar sodium hydroxide, and that has a pH of Thirteen point zero six, and then I rinse my probe once again. And wipe it down. And then move on to the final solution, which is five molar sodium hydroxide. And that gives me a pH Okay, I have thirteen point two eight. I mean, this is usually expected at the extreme ends of the measurements when you have a very low pH and a very high pH due to. Um, limitations on the pH probe itself. So that's why the experiment is designed to use a second method to check for the validity of the pH measurements. And we are going to do that by putting drops of each of the measured solutions in a well plate and then use the universal indicator to check in comparison with the standard colors that we have in a chart that will be provided online on the D2L page. So I'm going to use the 0.1 molar HCl as an example. We are taking 10 drops of each of the solution. into the well plate and this is the key for the arrangement of each of the solutions in the well plates. I have shown you how to do the first 1.1 molar HCl and I've already imputed each of the solutions into the well plate according to this key and this key will be posted on the D2L page and made available for everyone to use in reference to the part D of the experiment. And now what we are going to be doing is to add one drop each into each section of the well plates. And this is the universal indicator and I'm going to be adding one drop each.